hello, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining in. Dr. Judy here, Dr. Judy Rosenberg of Dr. Judy WTF, What the Freud. And I want to start by thanking my audience so much for all the many years that you've been with me and the newcomers who are starting to learn about uh, my mind map and the What the Freud process and how we repeat ad nauseum, things from the past that we don't heal. And um, I also want to ask everyone who's listening uh, to please pay it forward and pay forward a PDF copy of my book, download it, and then pay it forward to all your friends, uh, family, coworkers, everybody, and also to pay forward the link to my website and radio show. And for those of you who are not subscribed yet, please do that. Please subscribe to the show so that you can get weekly notification. And this is a call-in show, everyone. So please call in and uh, please uh, get into the conversation. Tonight's conversation is about how assumptions lead to chaos. And I've seen this happen many times over in my treatment room, which is actually right here where I'm sitting. And uh, particularly uh, with couples, people assume things and where these assumptions come from and how they destroy relationships and how they destroy uh, ourselves. So let's get into it and let's start with the mind map process, which I'm going to break down and then we will connect the dots and see how everything is uh, born out of cause, as I like to say. And so if you put the mind map up there, I can start connecting the dots and presenting my system of healing, which is predicated on the past, which is the first three panels, the present, which is the chaos and defenses and breakdowns of today. And then the paradigm shift is where we all want to be going. We want to shift out of the mess and get into reconnecting and healing and um, create unity in our, our life and our world. So what is it about childhood wounds and assumptions, which we will tie together, that create chaos? So if you look at panel number one, you will see in the background the light, which represents truth, i.e. not assuming, it represents our best versions of ourselves. It represents Maslow's uh, reference to our self-actualized version of ourselves. And it represents a lot of things that are um, in alignment. So if you see this panel one, you will also see the shadows. And what do they represent? Well, they represent lies. They represent uh, childhood wounds. They represent anything that interferes with our growth, anything that interferes with seeing ourselves in the world correctly. And uh, I want to enumerate some of the childhood wounds that, that interfere with this uh, process of growing and seeing truthfully. And those wounds are um, in no particular order, um, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional, physical neglect, and um, smothering, controlling. And I think we already have a call. so. Hello, thank you for calling in. And uh, what name would you like me to call you? And I'm reminding you to please stick to the topic, which is assumptions and how assumptions create chaos. Hi. Yeah. What is your name? Hi. What would you like me to call you? Uh, you can call me Bob. Bob. Okay. Hi, Bob. How are you? Yes. Hi. And um, you mentioned about sticking to the topic which is about how assumptions could lead to chaos and how we could go down that road. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I want to okay. uh, make the point here that when we assume we create chaos and uh, a lot of breakdowns yes. happen. So what is going on in your, your world that, um, that started with assumptions and then broke down mm -hmm. and disconnected you yes. from people? Yeah, go ahead. Well, it has been going back and forth, and I did the mind map, and I cleared myself of all of the 
you know, being the observer, not the absorber and yes. being aware and not feeling that, that um, hatred or that darkness that could just slimmer over you, which, and with the topic being how assumptions, I was told uh, six months ago around August um, that my dad died. Mm -hmm. A day after he died, I, a friend, uh, a person I, I live with, uh, 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 they told me, your mother called me. I said, okay. And uh, did you want to speak to me? And no. I said, is it important? Your mother did not want to speak to you. I said, okay. And I just had my cereal and went to work, came back. The next day, the person I lived with just went ahead. Then the door, he said, I'm going to tell you, they don't want to even know, but I can't live with myself. Your father had a heart attack and died, okay? And I said, my mother didn't call me. My sister didn't call me. And I lived two blocks away from them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, should I go to the funeral? He said, well, your mother didn't want you to even know that he died and your sister and your father had this thing that they don't even want you to know. So my assumption was, should I have went to the funeral? They said. Wait, I'm sorry. Back up. Your assumption was what? My assumption to myself, should I have went to his funeral, whether or not they, I was heard through that he, he didn't want me to know he died. And. So, so I just want to make sure, went, what, what were you assuming? What were you assuming here? <laughs> My, my assuming was to myself that I have went to my father's funeral. Even those people were telling me you're not welcome. He was still my father. Should I have went? So I'm not really clear. You were assuming that. I was assuming that if I had went to my dad's funeral, it would have led to chaos and oh, okay okay I see. I see i was assuming whether or not i should have went to my own father's funeral okay. i didn't even know my father was died through my mother my sister no one told me a friend told me and i found out he died i saw in the newspaper so yes. i was assuming even when he died should i have went to his funeral or even just wore sunglasses and sat in the next seat, seat over because so, you know, some, some assumptions are based on uh, information from experience, okay? So one, one of the things I think you mentioned is that you assume that if you go to the funeral, it wouldn't be a positive thing, correct? Since your mother didn't tell you about it, your sister didn't tell you about it, nobody told you about it. So um, the assumption, if if I'm reading this correctly, is that you weren't really wanted there. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. Okay. Okay. So you, you, you weren't wanted there. And so, um, so actually, what did you do about that? I did a lot of research. I did a lot of research on YouTube, on narcissistic families. If they don't want you there, are you better off? going or not going I did a lot of Google searches yes. I was pretty much alone and each answer said that if there's no right or wrong answer if you don't feel you're welcome at a funeral of a bereaved don't go and there wasn't a mess with my father since I worked with him for about 25 years and then there was a discord but I wasn't even told that by anybody that he passed on. It was only by a friend a, a day after. Yeah, what? Well, and it was very awesome. bizarre. I'm so sorry, Bob, that you, you never got a chance because I know you really wanted it. I know you wanted on some level to repair this thing. And some things are just not repairable because it takes two people, or in your case, maybe even um, a family. So did you end up going or not going? not going wow. everything in me was telling me to protect myself and i knew that 
I didn't want to be in a position where I felt vulnerable or I felt like um, defenseless. I did not want to feel like that. I wanted to be stronger, but I also wanted to do what's right for myself. And that was where the topic goes to how it can lead to chaos and confusion. So this is so not the right answer. I think, I think in your case, your assumption was correct. They didn't want you there. And your assumption was in the service of pr protecting you. And so in this particular case, and remember, we can't just generalize the statement that, and that's what you're reminding me of tonight. I can't generalize and say that all assumptions lead to chaos. In your case, maybe your assumptions led to your self-protection, wouldn't you say? I do have to say that. And also by a second cousin told me, they said, Bob, you could either go and just be an observer of your father's mass, or you can just stay away from it and opt out. But either way, you could do whichever you feel. There's no right or wrong answer. I think that's a really great way to see it. There is no right or wrong answer. And it, it, it comes down to you, Bob, whether you'd be better off and, and, and experience something of a closure or healing or, or something that's going to help your life by going or yeah. keeping away from the chaos of, of feeling yet again rejected by your family and having nobody to cry with and not 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 necessarily that you're crying because I know that your father and your family have been quite cruel to you um and 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 let's address this part because even though our parents sometimes uh disconnect so brutally from from us their offspring there's still that fantasy that uh they're our father they're our mother there's still that piece of us that craves some kind of a connection to them. And that's the brutality of it is that, that there's just so cruel and um, disconnecting. There's also, yes, I wanted to point this out in the middle of what you were saying, that there was also that as you spoke on other episodes, that goodness, like they would stop over your house and said, look, I picked you up your prescription so you don't have to go to this CVS. And I heard sick, here's a couple vitamin C's and a bottle of ginger ale. There's that positive enforcement, which right. could make it, uh, I don't want to say complete gaslighting because once we reach a certain age and level of education, we're able to look around the whole sculpture, but it's not all completely horrible it's right. manipulative but then i i peep, the assumption was that if i was even have went to to the funeral or to have that closure don't go for them go for yourself even if you yes. could sit in the back pew without right. being attention mm -hmm. and that was where the whole question mark is or was yes. and so it still lingers because it's still fresh and, and that, that's correct. You go for yourself because um, because it's your process. It's, it's the way you want to uh, uh, create an experience for yourself or uh, go back to the closure experience. And that you didn't choose to go makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, look, you, you, you weren't even told. And um, no. at the funeral, we're not exactly enlightened witnesses to the pain that you encountered uh, throughout your life. So it, it's not as though you had uh, some, some friends there that you could uh, relate to and uh, talk to and feel some sort of a level of, of support from. Do you think there was anybody at the funeral that you could have had that support from? Not at all. Okay. All right. So and and the, the um before you you go any further, what makes this even a little bit 
more intense was I lived on the um, corner of the church and school was where the whole thing was uh, held. And it was so close to me. And even how close they were, it's almost as if unbelievable. It was 11 o'clock and I remember thinking it's less than a three minute walk. It's across the street and Mm. And so you you were able to actually see the the procession. You were able to see people pulling up and going into the church, and so very was... very little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Yes, but very little bit because I wanted to make sure that I I I didn't feel that heat or projection thrown at me. It was it was very strange. It was a very intense feeling, knowing that I wasn't wanted or invited, but just watching it and knowing that it was my dad and this is very strange it was yes so so let's and go I had, back my, to some let's go back to some assumptions that we as humans make as children we assume that our parents love us correct we assume that yeah we assume yes we do okay so these are these are the assumptions that lead to chaos Sometimes, in some cases, we assume that our parents are there for us. We assume that they have our back. We assume that we're going to be family forever. We assume that even if there's a break in in communication or connection, there's a road back. These are some of the basic assumptions in a human family. Isn't that so? Yes, it is. It, okay. it, it, it's also taught when we go to school and we're shown this and we go into society, we go back home and then we're role model that there's, they're having dinner and let's all sit together and talk and be united. Right. right. And it's a mixed bag because as you said, there are your parents having dinner, right? And then there are your parents being abusive. So which one? And, and, and I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. I think it is really, really diff- difficult to hate the people we love and love the people we hate and rec- reconcile this cognitive dissonance of um, not being on one side or the other because we're all mixed bags except that sometimes things take a shift for the worse and it paradigm shifts the whole relationship to the point where it's just about impossible to come back from it. And, um, in, and, in your, and yeah. But how do you make now, since I've said what happened and, and we're speaking about it and we're moving over the bridge, how, how do you just let it go? move on and and get it out of your thoughts and say okay I didn't go they didn't want me there let me let me just wash that away like a duck on a pond you know because you feel that Bob I, I just want to say this to you don't expect that from yourself it's a very high expectation don't don't expect that to wash off of you like a duck, like, you know, water off of a duck. Don't, don't expect it. Expect to have feelings about that. However, as I say, and you know, because you've repeated what I've said, identify it, not with it. So it depends what you make it to mean. If you make it to mean I'm not lovable, I'm not wanted, I'm not special, I'm not this, I'm not that, right? Just like panel three, negative core beliefs. If this incidence, this death feeds your negative core belief, that's where you have to do the work and unplug. That's that's because you're not the cause of their dysfunction. You're not the cause of this horrible disconnect. I know the treatment you received in your family. You've talked about it and uh, it's yes. unconscionable. You're not the cause of that. Well, right. And as an enlightened witness, as someone who has moved through the paradigm shift seven, eight, and nine, I thought that I was strong enough to just be there and and bear witness without even being in touch with them. 
like wear dark sunglasses or a or a, a scarf or just be very incognito and be yes. an observer. But then it's like, I no, what would be the point of even completely compromising who I yeah. am? And yeah. this has been, yes, thank you. Thank you. And this has been months later and I'm just, there were some good times that he would speak to me as a, as a friend. And then the times that it got worse, it just, happened and then I'm reeling with the aftermath of should I have went just for my own sake not for them and just being in the background or did I do the right thing and um there I think by no speaking right, about it there is no right thing. there is no right thing there's no right you, thing you see mm -hmm. for you to even say that is is um it, it's it's so mind-boggling that the really is a, there is not a right thing no that's... but but you know what's what's really important is that you you voted for yourself you thought it through and you thought and you researched and you went through youtubes and you studied this thing and the only reason you would have gone is if you would have estimated or guesstimated that there was something healing for you in it and I think you concluded for yourself that there wasn't and therefore you didn't go now that doesn't stop the um the pain of of, of, of losing I want you to listen to this show again losing a father that you didn't have losing a I, father I, know, I know it left and right I was grieving the parent you never had and it's 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 a wish, but there's that also trauma bond of sometimes they were nice, but yes. I, he showed me his his bad card, and I just thought maybe if I may yeah. add another thing, Robert Bob, one other thing sure. I had is that you assumed that a, a piece of you assumed that if you went, things would be better. And another piece of you assume that if you didn't go, things would be better. However, things are the, it is what it is. We're going to have feelings about this one way or the other. You can't get away from that. You can't just close the book on it. Um, however, I did do this YouTube called Grieving the Parents That You Never Had. And again, you know, it's never all or none. So our parents have their light and their darkness. It's just that when the darkness eats up the light, then that's where the human disconnect comes in and we just don't want to try anymore. So sure, you'll have fond memories of him uh, going to the grocery store or getting you vitamins or CVS and sure, and you're, you're entitled to connect with that and smile about that if you want to smile about that. And that's why it's so hard because we want to put things in a basket. He's all good. He's all bad. And people just are not all good. And they're not all bad. It's just that, as, as I said, sometimes things are so leaning toward the disconnect and then they snap that it's really difficult to go back. And I think you actually um, experienced that point of no return, which is probably why you didn't show up at the funeral or one of the reasons you, um, you know, it's, it's as if I, I spoke to someone and they said, is there even a little bit of your father that you want to take with you or that whole experience and maybe just the sense of humor or something of that dynamic. But other than that, you know, you you do think that you love someone that you're connected with before it gets bad and then it gets worse. So yes, that's the trauma bond, right? You're you're bonded to somebody is. that isn't isn't having your back. You're bonded to somebody who doesn't give you the uh, unconditional love that breaks your trust. You're bonded to that person. Why? I call it the toxic bond because it's a one way street thing. And children do bond to parents that are cruel and punishing and, 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 and lack empathy and so on. They do because they have to as part of our survival. Remember, we're set up that way. 
we're set up to bond to our parents, period. And then it takes a lot to disconnect from that. And um, sometimes it just happens that we don't want to connect back. And that's okay, too. So in terms of how do you find closure in this, uh, I think it's a process. I, I don't see this black and white, close the books on it. I think you're always going to have right. thoughts of his humor. Um, one thing that I could tell you, Bob, is what did he do for you? Wow, he was probably your biggest curse by design ever. Because of you, dad, I've grown. Because of you, dad, I have insight. Because of you, dad, I'm an independent thinker. Because of you, dad, I don't get fooled by um, Manip okay. manipulators. <laughs> yes. Isn't that so? Because of your father and this curse by design that you had to endure, not only uh, uh, by your father, but by your, your mother and other members of the family, you have bent over backward to mind map yourself and Google narcissistic abuse. Oh learn and make yourself a better human being and sometimes that's what happens is these tragedies these horrendous horrific disconnects become the place where we sharpen ourselves and grow and um become the best versions of ourselves so maybe maybe that you could take with you okay and I'm going to, I'm going to go on. I, I want to make some points about relationships and assumptions and in, in relationships. And was there another thing you wanted to add to that? Go ahead. Yes. There's one, one thing that I wanted to add to it. And um, I guess you could put this in the category of confusion. Yeah. M Logically, I know that my father was broken. His father left him when he was a teenager, came back in his late 40s, and then winded up dying. My dad also had an abusive stepfather, and he died when he was about, when my dad was 42, and my dad's biological father was 43, and now my dad died at 42. So it's almost like I'm being faced with the multi-generational vote. Yeah, yes, okay, sir. I guess we, we were supposed to have fathers after 43. You know, it's kind of that. So, so, so look, there's always a legacy piece. of Italian. So I was going to say there's always a piece of us that can have compassion from the brokenness and the abuse that our parents multi-generationally endured. And maybe if you can connect with that, but wherever it takes you, you remind yourself that he wasn't born broken. He became broken and he passed down this brokenness to the next generation. And now you've worked very hard to clear it and make it whole for yourself. And I think that it's valid to think about that because even though we want to just um, make them the devil, okay, it, it, it's true. But here, here's the part that I always um remind myself of is that people are all capable and at least could try to do some healing they don't have to just act out everything uh that they went through in terms of their wounds on the next generation i think it's everybody's responsibility to heal and that's why i'm so big on paying it forward learning paying it forward to the next generation healing from narcissistic yes. abuse, okay? And so I think that might be on some level um, helpful for you to remember that he wasn't born this way. And if you are spiritual, which I know you are spiritual, perhaps you could connect to his unbroken self because he's now in spirit form. So he has no ego. He has no narcissism in spirit form. Okay, and so maybe you can connect to the father that didn't have the tools, he didn't have a mind map, he didn't have Google, he didn't have YouTube, or he didn't avail himself of it. And so he never healed in his lifetime. And so that's part of death, in my opinion.
opinion is that our, our souls are released. So there's, there's no more ego. After that, after the August, then it, our dreams just like residue from PTSD or, or just confusion or just some love that was rejected or some uh, zygarnic effect are the dreams the residue what, what or you, are your, they just your dreams the dreams that you're having yeah yeah i've been thinking about him a lot and um just him being around the corner and just just being a nice person because there was a lot of covertness it wasn't just as mommy dear it's just everything being in your face but well, we're, we're always trying to work in, in the healing process Okay, we're trying to work it through. Our dreams are probably a piece of working it through. Um, Freud called dreams as the royal road to the unconscious. And so you might want to pay attention because they're full of symbolism and information about yourself as, as you relate to the players in, in your dream. Um, so again, Trauma, yeah, anything that's a pain point, any disconnect, and I say this in my book, and please download the PDF, you all get free copies of it, I really want my message to travel far and wide, and uh, you can download the book, Be the Cause, Healing Human uh, Disconnect, if you can put it up on the screen, I'd appreciate it, and people can see it. And then people can also order uh, the hard copy off of amazon.com. So pay that forward to your friends, family, acquaintances, bosses, neighbors, friends and enemies alike. Okay, so that we don't have to live in this disconnected world. So I try to put my, my card in there to make a difference. And so however you can make a difference, do it because we are all causal beings. We can either be the cause of chaos, uh, defenses and breakdowns, or we can be the cause of shifting out of the mess and um, healing and creating yes. unity. Um, so I wanna make some points about assumptions and relationships and what I've been seeing in the treatment room. So and, and thank you so much, Dr. Judy. I, I have oh. called your shows many years ago and I've okay. grown so much that I don't even recognize that person. I've, I've so For evolved sure. and, I know. and I know. it's been beyond, I mean, just my, my quest for knowledge. And, and when it comes to heart and the emotions, I guess there is never a right answer. It's just, no, no, you it's know, all, it's all your heart, process. your feelings. Right, right. And we do the best we can to evolve ourselves and complete things. So, However you chose, you chose for your reasons. And either way, you would have had a, a reasons to think, well, why did I do that? Or why didn't I do that? So, yes, right? Yes. Okay. So thank, thank you yes. Bob, for calling in. And I know we'll be in touch. And, um, and thinking of you and thinking about your beautiful dog. And I know that she's been a light in your life. And uh, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Okay, I'm going to move on to assumptions in relationships and how those really create a lot of chaos. So let's talk first about sourcing these assumptions. So maybe I should present a, uh, a kind of a mock case study of uh, husband and wife come in and um, the, the, let's say the the husband assumes that the wife is cheating. He just assumes it. Why does he assume it? Maybe he has uh, parents that cheated on each other. Maybe his mother cheated on the father and he has this image of women that they all cheat. Eventually they're all gonna cheat. So uh, husband and wife come, come in together and the wife says, you know, I can't believe this. I went on vacation. And um, I came home and my husband seemed so cold and we moved and he's barely talking to me. I don't get it. And I pushed him for an answer. And he said, well, you know, I know what you've been up to. He goes, what? I know what you've been up to. He goes, excuse me? What are you talking about? He goes, you know, I know 
that when you came home, you didn't really give me that warm of a hug. It was just a weird hug. It didn't feel all that loving. And then right after you hugged me, you went into the bedroom and you got on your cell phone and you seemed really busy on the cell, on your cell phone. I know what you were doing. So what's that going to create? I mean, what's that? Okay. Is that a setup for chaos defenses or, and breakdowns or what? I would say, and this is just an example. I'm using it as a mock uh, situation of what happens. And where do these assumptions come from? Usually from the blueprint. We assume because we've, we've experienced it, we've seen it, we've lived it, and then we project it onto our loved ones. So once we start doing that, the game goes down really, really quickly because the other person who, let's assume, didn't do anything, let's assume the wife wasn't cheating, will feel really offended that this assumption is, is coding her entire sense of being and that the, the, the cracked lens of perception of the husband is really being projected on her. So where does she have to go from there? She can start defending and say, are you kidding me? I, I don't do that. That's not my nature. When have I, you know, so there it causes a defense denial, right? And the more she defends, the more the husband may be incited to become more and more suspicious. So it's a complete downward spiral, as you can see, into chaos, defenses, and breakdowns. So when I do treatment with couples in particular, there are a lot of assumptions that I hear in the room, assumptions that somebody doesn't love the other, assumptions that the other person uh, isn't telling the truth, the assumptions that uh, one or the other is um, uh, 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 planning to get out of the relationship. And, you know, some of these things are true, no doubt. It's just that some of them are not. So assumptions, when they're based on lies and they're not clearly um, processed and discussed, are going to create what I call a cracked lens of perception upon the relationship. And what I mean by that is that People are not seeing each other in truth. They're seeing through the lens of assumption, which is going to create distortion, which is going to create uh, defense mechanisms, which is going to create a breakdown. Uh, so let, let's go into some other assumptions and source it. So if we go to panel number one again, and go to these childhood wounds, let's say that someone's wound was um, neglect. Okay, so you come into a relationship, your wound is neglect, and your husband or your wife is out really, really late, and then you become pain triggered by feeling neglected. And let's say that you're a latchkey child, and somewhere in your past you were left alone too long and you were um, injured in that area and now your husband or wife leaves you alone too long that file is going to come up so why is that file going to come up because that's where your injury lies you're not assuming that that person is having a great time and thinking of you and talking about what a wonderful person you are you're not assuming that they're planning your birthday while they're out to to, to dinner with their friends, you're not assuming these things. What are you assuming? The worst. And where's the worst coming from? The crack lens of perception brought on you by childhood wounds. In this case, I'm using the example of, of, of being uh, rejected and um, uh, abandoned and, and not, not being emotionally attended to. Uh, going back to Dr. John Bowlby, if we don't have the psychological nutrients that lead to healthy human psyche, psychological nutrients like eye contact, skin contact, breastfeeding, attunement, a, a sense of a, 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 a parent having a, 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 a healthy family system that supports you and unconditionally loves you. If you don't have that, then 
chances are you're going to probably see life through the lenses of that and then recreate the hurt and definitely assume that everybody's out to get you in those areas. So in this case, the area is feeling rejected. And so when that person comes home, you're not smiling, assuming that they had a great time and were thinking of you and miss you. You're immediately assuming that they were out because they wanted to get away from you or they're talking badly about you or they're having some affair or something. So I just want to, to show you how these things work and connect the dots. And earlier on, while I was um, thinking about doing the show and thinking about connecting the dots, I remember when I was a little girl, one of my favorite things to do was to take the crayon and connect the dots that form the picture of the chicken or the dog or the clown or the house. Do you remember, I'm dating myself here, but do you remember those little games where there are a bunch of dots and you, you connected the dots and when you did so, aha, the chicken appeared or the form of the dog appeared. And that's, I think, as I'm thinking about it, I'm still connecting dots, this time psychological dots. and. This time, I'm still very interested in having the picture emerge. And so the mind map is the pathway that I use to allow this picture to emerge. So in couples therapy, it's really important that people do their individual work and connect their own dots so that their assumptions are not um, projected into the relationship. And the assumptions don't take the form of their childhood wounds that we uh, that create reactions and horrible core beliefs that then get triggered. And if there's anybody else that wants to call in, um, please do that. I'd love to hear from you and hear about how your assumptions killed the relationship or disconnected the relationship and what kinds of assumptions were made. And sometimes it's embarrassing because we make these assumptions and then we find out that they're not really true and we've got to get off of seeing it that way. So we have to correct our psycho perceptual lens, if you will. And if people are willing to self reflect and self correct, they can do that. But if they're stubborn and they're stuck in their narcissistic wound, they won't let go. A lot of times they just won't let go. You said that, or you did that, or you, uh, didn't do that because you don't love me. You're just using me. You think I'm worthless. You think I'm stupid. You think this, you think that. And whenever you have that, you think and the finger pointed out toward the other person, watch out, watch out because you, and I'm saying this directly to you, may be creating a disconnect. Okay, so what's the alternative here is you can, number one, look to your childhood wounds. And then if you do think that there's something going on that you don't like, then I, um, I always recommend that you use the Peaceful Healing Dialogue, which is on my website. It's in the book and it's a way of dialoguing, which um, I'll demonstrate just so that you can hear it. So let's say, um, let's take that last scenario um, or one of those scenarios and husband comes home and he's late and wife assumes that he's been cheating because her father cheated or vice versa. Um, and she's not sleeping very well because she's in her assumption. So one of the things that she can do is the next day um, invite her husband to have a discussion and it might be something like you know um walter the other day when you went out with your friends and you came back really late i didn't sleep well uh, is this a good time to talk about it with you and then if if the person's not ready then be honest i'm not ready to talk how about later in the day okay so number one in the peaceful healing dialogue is you don't want to create resistance. You don't want to just barrage somebody with a conversation. You want to ask permission. So when you get the permission to talk, you say, you take responsibility and ownership for it and say, you know, Walter, the other day when you were out, 
I went right to my fear that you're having an affair. I went right to um, that you don't love me. I went right to that um, you're not that interested in this marriage. I went right to that I'm bored with you, that you're bored with me. And then you can have a talk about this, okay? And so it might take some conversation to really um, help your, your, your significant other step into your shoes and understand where you're coming from. By the way, that conversation is not an assumption. It's a, an ownership of what you assumed. It's not saying you came home late because you're just saying, well, I went to this place in my mind. And then the other person can hopefully be there for you and say, wow, that's amazing. Where do you think that came from? And if you've done the mind map, then you could say, well, you know, come to think of it. Thanks for asking because my, my dad used to come home really late and my mother would get frantic about it. And she'd accuse him of having an affair. And, you know, one time she did actually catch him in an affair. So I, I guess I still have that paranoia within me. And so these are the things that bring people closer together because if people can understand each other and they can understand their core fears and their core beliefs and not use these core fears and beliefs against each other, now we can have a progressive healing dialogue that leads to a paradigm shift in seeing, uh, a, a new blueprint for healing, and an interconnectivity that creates a, a sense of, uh, of unity, a sense of we-ness with um, whoever you're conversing with. And so I just wanted to invite you once again to call in. We do have a few minutes. Are there any questions in the chat room? Well, let's see. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, mostly comments? Comments? Yes, okay. but uh, no questions. So if anybody has questions in the chat room, uh, we have a few more minutes. Or if you want to okay. call in, give them a call at 323-524-2599. Thank you very much. And, and, and so in the meantime, I want people to be aware that I'm very busy editing my uh, up and coming video healing from narcissistic abuse. It's quite a deep journey in, into the wounds of apathy. Um, narcissism is um, really a wound of disconnect, a wound based on a system gone wrong where parents just don't care or care enough. They lack empathy for their children. And so instead of relating to their children, they use their children. And this video is uh, directed toward healing the narcissistic wound of apathy and its effects on the psyche, its effects on relationships, also its effects on the on the body, the soma. Uh, I get into that. And so I'll let everybody know when that's available. And my mind map video series, the nine panel mind map video series is always available. And you can purchase that and uh, start your journey and psychoeducate yourself on the process of how to heal from your childhood wounds. And you can always reach out to the Psychological Healing Center and uh, request a, a full consultation or a free consultation. We have a really beautiful staff of people here. And we, of course, do Zoom therapy and Zoom uh, uh, coaching and teaching. So I invite you to do that. And so I hope that you are connecting the dots between um, how these projections and assumptions create this um, chaos and disconnect amongst people that presumably you want to trust and you want to know uh, has your back. And then because of childhood wounds, these assumptions become somehow um, injected into the relationship and crack the lens of perception and then bring people down and then the paranoia and the mistrust and all that follows and the defense mechanisms that get erected 
to um, defend against the pain of uh, 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 and fear of loss and, and hurt, of course, um, are mechanisms that people use to protect their, themselves. And so when you're protecting yourself from an assumption and the assumption is based on a lie, uh, that's a whole nother mess. Uh, so you can see that this goes from bad to worse when we are um, full of assumptions and when our assumptions are coming from unhealed childhood wounds. So back full circle, what do we do about it? We've got to go back to the source. We've got to pinpoint our wounds, our pain points, and we've got to go into the pain and process the feelings and not run from them and dissect the core beliefs that are born out of these um, lies and misconceptions. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining in and pay it forward and share my book and um, links to the website and radio show. And uh, I'll see everyone next week. Take care. Good night. Bye.